السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام لا لا ليتس ويك اب ابيت السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته نو نو اي ثينك غير وي غير تراي ات وان مور تايم بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اكسبتبل شيخ اكسبتبل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين اللهم أمين رب اشرح لي صدري وأسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم So it seems the following questions been uh, coming up uh, a lot uh, since yesterday which is how did you learn your English so people keep telling me how do you learn your English being an Egyptian living in Hong Kong <laughs> so yeah uh, before I moved to Hong Kong when I got married my wife is a Filipino as I said yesterday uh, I, I didn't really speak English in fact I stayed with my wife one year uh, practicing sign language <laughs> and my wife was so patient, you know, explaining uh, the things that I don't understand. I would be sitting with her and her friends or in a company uh, while everybody is speaking and looking at me. And I would be like that. <laughs> and I have no idea what they were saying. Uh, so the people are asking, how do you improve your English? Well, I was talking to Sheikh Tawfiq a, bit, uh, a little while ago and he said, when you love something, when you have passion for something, you will execute. So that, that's how I improved my English. Still, I'm working on it to improve it even further, alhamdulillah. Uh, let me tell you a story. Before I moved to Hong Kong, I was talking to my wife on the internet. And my wife was uh, coming up to Egypt to, uh, to get married. So uh, she asked me, okay, I'm going to get you some snacks from Hong Kong. I said, no. Don't ever bring snacks to Egypt. She said, why? These are something wonderful. I said, no, no, in Egypt, it's haram. We don't, we don't eat snacks. My wife is a businesswoman, so she immediately she said, oh, if the people in Egypt don't eat snacks, then it's good time for me to introduce snacks to Egyptians. <laughs> so, I said, no, 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 no. And then she brought some kind of a pack, package of, of snacks showing me on the webcam. She said, this is the thing that even kids love. I said, no, we do not eat snacks. Please respect our culture. So she said, look, you know, she was looking in the camera like, why in the world these people don't eat snacks? Everybody enjoys snacks. And I, I thought that I was so stupid that there's something wrong. So I went to this Nokia phone. You remember this old Nokia phone? There was a game there. And that game was called what? Snakes. I thought my wife was going to get me snakes from Hong Kong. <laughs> so, so this is how bad my English was <laughs> in those days. Inna lillahi. Stop laughing! <laughs> yeah, you get it finally? MashaAllah. Alright. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> Don't tell this to anyone, Sheikh Tawfiq, huh? <laughs> Alright, so today, inshallah, we're going to talk about four, four manners. Uh, you know, in the, when they define the word change, they say to replace something with something else, with something different. And that's what we wanted to bring, inshallah, to our community, as an individual, as a community, and as, a, as an ummah, as, whole, as a whole. Things that have been forgotten a little bit, or taking a lot lightly. <clears throat> and I want to ask you a question to begin the topic, inshallah. If you were told today that in 20 years from now, you will remain just as you are today, the same, no change whatsoever, would you really like to hear that? Obviously not. You wanted to change, you wanted to, to insert in your life some positive changes, so that you can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with pure heart, inshallah. So everyone wanted to come up with positive change in the life. So what are these things that we need to replace with something positive? So I want you to note down, inshallah. The first thing on the list that we wanted to insert 
in our lives. If you are sisters, uh, I'm very happy to see your notes. Are you, are you making notes? Any sisters making notes? Any sisters making notes? Okay. Uh, any brothers uh, memorizing what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. It's important to make notes. Otherwise, you know, the teachers who taught us, you know, what, what we are trying to convey today, they, they told us the importance of using the pen, of making notes. That's how we learn. Because things will be forgotten right away after you leave this hall. So make notes, go back to them, try to implement as much as you can, inshallah. So the ummah, in my opinion, they need to replace lying with truthfulness. Lying with truthfulness. Many people in our community, unfortunately, they lie, they utter lies, misinformation. Even sometimes on the MTR, on, in the metro, you, you see some, someone talking on the phone and telling his friend, five minutes, I'm going to come to you in five minutes. But he's too far away from the destination. Sometimes you are at home and somebody is calling you, where are you? I've been waiting for you for 30 minutes. You tell him what? It's too traffic, you know, traffic is too bad, but I'm coming, don't worry. Yeah, we lie constantly. Listen to the Prophet ﷺ and what he said. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is commanding the ummah. By saying, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالصِّدْقِ فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَصْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا A beautiful narration. The Prophet is saying what? I command you to be truthful. It's a commandment, my brother and sister. It's not something optional. You are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to be truthful, to utter that which is true. So the Prophet sallallahu said, I command you to be truthful. Why? Because truthfulness leads to righteousness. And righteousness leads to Jannah. Who doesn't want to go to Jannah? Raise up your hand. Doesn't. Ah, oh, gotcha. Every time they fall for it. Every time. Everybody wants to go to Jannah. Here is one of the keys towards the, to Jannah that would take you to Jannah. Is being truthful. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda, when he was addressing an Najashi the king, an Najashi the king asked him, What did your Prophet you know, teach you? He said, He taught us to worship God and to speak the truth. The second on the list of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda was to speak that which is true. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the more you keep on telling the truth and strive to say the truth, you will be written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as truthful, as Siddiqa. Who knows Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda? Abu Bakr Siddiq. Anyone knows him? I, I don't see hands, subhanAllah. Okay, okay. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda, the best friend of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. In fact, the best human being ever after the Prophets. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda. He was titled as Siddiq because he used to believe in whatever the Prophet ﷺ used to say and he used to always say the truth. Do you want to be with him in Jannah? Do you want to be with Abu Bakr inshallah in Jannah? If you want, my brothers and sisters, if you want to be with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda in Jannah, be like him in dunya. That's the criteria. And one of these criteria that will take us inshallah to Jannah is to utter that which, which is right, which is true. And the opposite, and this is something amazing about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to command us to do something good and always warned us from its opposite. So he will say, in that narration for example, he would tell us, alaykum bis sidq you must be truthful. In the second part of the narration, he say what? Wa iyyakum wal kathib. And I warn you from lying. Because lying leads to wickedness. And wickedness leads to hellfire. And a man or a woman keep on telling lies and strive to tell lies until she or he is written with Allah as liar. Would you want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that label liar? No. So strive. Today is the day like the brother earlier was saying. Today is the day for making changes. And this is one of the things that we wanted to change. We wanted to change that habit of lying. And our scholars would say, 
that we may lie in only three cases. Only three cases, right? In case of, you know, being in danger, if somebody threatened you, leave Islam now or I blow off your head. You say, okay, okay, I'm not, I'm not a Muslim. And it happens. It happens during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. A companion was tortured until he uttered some word of kufr, some words of disbelief. And he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him what happened. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, if they did the same, if they come back and did the same, you say the same thing. So in case of being under threat, you may utter words of kufr. Or you may, you know, lie. And the second case, if you are trying to reconcile between two brothers or two sisters who are not in good terms. So you will go to that sister and tell her, you know, Sister Wallahi, Sister Fatima, you know, Sister Aisha love you so much. Maybe Sister Aisha hates Sister Fatima. <laughs> but you're trying to create love between them, so you utter a few words here and there to reconcile between two brothers or two sisters who are not, or who are quarreling. And the third case is my favorite. And that is to lie to your spouse. <laughs> no, 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 don't get me wrong. To lie to your spouse is not to cheat on your wife and come and lie to her and tell her I was working, no. But to exchange these sweet words, sweet words that will never ever harm you, to say them, just to please your wife or your husband. You know, like in the, in the case of two uh, uh, people who are engaged, for example, and we know that engagement period is so sweet, so nice, so the husband or the, the fiancé will go and visit his in-laws, and of course, before going, the brother will wear the best clothes. He will shower himself with perfume. Right? Because he wanted to appear in the best shape in front of his fiance. And of course, the sister back home, she woke up before Fajr. She didn't do tahajjud. No, she stayed. <laughs> she stayed all day, all, all day just in front of the mirror. You know, fixing her face, putting a lot of makeup, a lot of mascara and rouge a and all that stuff that you guys use. Why? Because you wanted to appear in front of your fiancé in the best condition. And then we got married. And the first night. The first night. <laughs> you know, in the morning, after we sleep, then we got up in the morning. This is the first time you're seeing your wife in that condition. The hair gone everywhere on the bed. Sometimes it goes inside your nose. <laughs> and then of course the mascara and all stuff, it bleeds on your face. So the brother wakes up and look and say, A'udhu Billah, you know. <laughs> and of course the brother is snoring all night. One, le one leg on the, in the east, one leg in the west. Right? These are surprises that you never seen before in your... Because marriage is one package, you cannot just pick and choose. And the looks are going to change anyway. She's going to get pregnant, she's going to get a little bit fat, you are going to gain weight because she cooked a lot of beautiful food. We have to accept each other and, and our faults. Now in the middle of all these crises, you look at your wife in the morning and you tell her, you are the most beautiful woman I have seen. You are lying! <laughs> <laughs> You are lying. But, that's the, but don't exaggerate. Otherwise, you, she will tell you, you're a big liar. You know? <laughs> don't exaggerate. Just try to exchange these sweet words. That, that keeps the marriage going in. Inshallah. Truthfulness. My, these are the only three cases. Aside from that, there is no pink lie. There is no white lie in Islam. Lies have got no colors. Just lies are lies. Truthfulness, my brothers and sisters, always associated with the manners of the prophets of Allah, the chosen ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صُدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا And mention in the book, in the Quran, the story of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. What are the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach us about Ibrahim? Indeed, he was truthful and a messenger. And the same verse is repeated when the Prophet, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Idris alayhi salam, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صُدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا I mentioned in the book the story of Idris for indeed, he was a truthful and a prophet. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Ismail. Who is Ismail alayhi salam? The son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
واذكر في الكتاب اسماعيل انه كان صادق الوعد وكان رسولا نبيا ام منشن ان ذا بوك ذا ستوري اوف اسماعيل عليه السلام فور شور فور انديد هي واز تروثفول تو هيز بروميس اند هي واز ا a messenger and a prophet These are the qualities associated with the Prophet of Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was titled by his enemies as what? As-sadiq, al-ameen, the truthful, the honest. We wanted to bring these qualities to our communities. <coughs> you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Ibrahim alayhi salam was truthful. And his son Ismail was, truth, was, was truthful as well. Parents in the audience, don't ever lie. to your children don't ever lie whether in front of them or behind their backs sometimes what happens in our homes the phone rings and the dad is telling his son don't lie if you lie you will go to hell but the phone rings and he tells his son if uncle omar tell him i'm not here <laughs> right? how many times these situations occur you are teaching your son to lie and when he lie to you you blame him Be truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your offspring truthful as well. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we said earlier, he teaches one manner and he warned us against its opposite. He also warned us that if you keep on lying, you may fall under the category of hypocrites. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Ayat al-Munafiq Thalath. The Prophet ﷺ said the sign of hypocrites are three things. If you want to identify a hypocrite, look for three qualities or three ill manners. The first on the list, إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ When he speaks, he utter a lie. We, we, I'm afraid that the ummah or some, some, some people among the, the Muslim ummah, I'm afraid that they will fall under, uh, in that category of being hypocrites. وَالْعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ إن المنافقين في الدرك الأسفل من النار الله سبحانه وتعالى said that منافقين hypocrites will be in the lowest part of hellfire I'm afraid that lying may lead us to this والعياذ بالله because that's the, the definition of hypocrisy is to pretend something that you're not so be careful my brothers and sister now how can we develop truthfulness how can we go practical inshallah the first thing associate yourself with those people who are truthful always be with those who are truthful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin all you who believe who are the believers here raise up your hand inshallah see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he say ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu every muslim should pay attention I call these verses the attention verses. Allah is calling you. All you who believe, yes, ya Allah. This should be our attitude. Yes, ya Allah, we are ready to listen to the command. Because every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, all you who believe, what comes next is a command for you to follow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say what? Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, taqu Allah. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be aware that Allah is over watching you. Taqu Allah, that's the meaning of taqwa. To be always conscious of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you are alone or in public. Ittaqullah, and then what? Wakunu ma'as sadiqeen. And always be with those who are truthful. Yesterday we said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that a man will always be inclined to follow the religion of his friend. So always be with good righteous company. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us if you want to be truthful, always be with those who are truthful. And the second point, always be motivated with the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you if you became truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. O you who believe, fear Allah, be conscious of Allah and always say that which is good, that which is truthful. Then what will happen after that? If I became truthful and said that which is right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us the reward In the same ayah, يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ He will fix your affairs for you. Many people, wallahi, would contact me with a lot of problems, a lot of issues. And they would be complaining, what is, why these things are happening to me? Maybe you are lying. Maybe. Maybe you, are always, you got used to say misinfo misinformation. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, you be truthful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix your affairs for you, and He will forgive your sins. These are the rewards given for those who are truthful. So this is number one. The first element that I wanted to discuss is we wanted to replace lying with truth. We always say the truthful. The second, the second uh, subject is humility. We wanted to replace arrogance with humilities. How, how many times have you heard someone saying, Do you, don't you know who am I? Have you heard this statement before? You know who am I? You know who's my father? Who are you? Excuse me, you are just a dust. You're made from dust, that's your origin. A tawadu or humility is part of the teaching that the Prophet ﷺ brought to us. And again, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to be uh, uh, humble and warned us from being arrogant. You see, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, when he sent two of his companions to call the people of Yemen to Islam, he told them what? That's, that's how the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us. He told them, Yassira, I want you to remember, if you want to remember anything of this lecture, I want you to remember these six words. The Prophet ﷺ said what? Yassira, wa la tu'assira, wa bashira, wa la tunaffira, wa tatawa'a, wa la takhtalifa. He said Yassira. He told his companions to go to the people of Yemen and make things easy for them. And then at the same time he said, but don't make things difficult for them. Naturally, if you told someone, make things easy, simultaneously you're telling him, don't, take, don't make things difficult. But the Prophet ﷺ is making sure he's leaving no room for confusion. He's telling them the command and he's warning them from its opposite. Yes, sira, make things easy on the people. And don't make things difficult on them. Wabashira, and give them good news. Talk to them about Jannah, about Halal. Before talking to them about hellfire and haram. Unfortunately in our community, sometimes we have people who hold haram guns in their sights. Whenever you talk to them about something, haram. <laughs> and there are some people who have the automatic haram gun. Har, you know. <laughs> Make things easy on the people. You know, even some non-Muslims would come and talk to us about Islam, and we would be very happy addressing them and, and answering their, their, their concerns. And then all of a sudden, you know, not because of what we do, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them and they will say, okay, I wanted to embrace Islam. I wanted to take shahada. I wanted to declare that there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And this is the, one of the most exciting moments in any Muslim's life is to hear someone coming to Islam. And so we start telling the people, okay, repeat after me. Ashhadu, ashhadu, and la. You, you give them the shahada bit by bit. But there are other brothers and sisters around observing, waiting. So there is one sister always with, always with hijab in her hand. Always with hijab in her hand, waiting for the sister to complete her shahada. And as soon as she says, Muhammad Rasulullah, she jumped off and she landed. She lands on her head with the hijab. The sister who became Muslim, she's not yet ready for hijab, so take it easy. She only accepted the concept that God is one and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Alright, now you start teaching her, teach her bit by bit. But don't make things difficult on her. She came from a different background and you start finding people telling, you know, the, this story, I don't know if I could say it here or not, but a brother was embracing Islam and after he finished, he, he was from America, but after he finished, a brother came from a certain country and he told him, I want you not to worry. About what the Americans say? You say, I've got a good doctor, so circumcision would be on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you say, what, what, what? You say, yeah. You have to be circumcised. You are Muslim. Yeah. Guys, leave him. Leave him get education on his own until the right time if you want to go for it. He would do it on his own, but don't scare people off. That's the advice of the Prophet ﷺ. Give them good news and don't give them, you know, the, the sad news or the bad news. And cooperate. Cooperate with one another. And do not contradict each other. That is how the Prophet ﷺ is telling us. In that narration, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to me that you should be humble. It's a revelation. Again, it's a command. 
It's a command. And its opposite is something horrible. Arrogance. The Prophet ﷺ made it very clear that those who have got in their heart an atom weight of a mustard seed of arrogance, they will not enter Jannah. Whether you're a Muslim or otherwise. Very simple, very straightforward. لا يدخل الجنة. The Prophet ﷺ said he will not enter Jannah. Who is that person? A person whose heart have one atom of a master seed of arrogance. What are the chances? What are the, what are the chances? That's why we said yesterday in relation to, to our parents, وَخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ You humble yourself, lower your wings of humility to your parents. We talked about humility yesterday a little bit. But here the Prophet ﷺ is warning us that you might you know, end up in hellfire. What is the definition again? Let us, let us go deeper a bit. What is the definition of, uh, of arrogance or, or, or of humility? Humility is to accept the truth from anyone who conveys it to you. Anyone who conveys the truth to you, you, accept, you have to accept it. And do not ever look down upon others because of the race, because of the religion or background. Don't ever look down upon people. I want to ask you by a show of hands, maybe uh, it will work here with the audience. Anyone, is there anyone in the audience have got a servant, a maid in their home? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> we are all the servants of Allah, right? So there's no shame about that. Okay, so I, I saw one or two hands. How many of those people who raise their hands invite their mates to eat with them on the same table, on the same dining table? One hand out of two and a half hands. One hand. <laughs> Sometimes I ask this in... in uh, Apparently in, in Pakistan, they have got a lot of uh, maids in, in Philippines the same. So when I ask this question, a lot of hands will be raised when I ask, is there anyone have got maids in their home? But when I ask, do they eat with you on the same dining table? You'll see scattered hands. Because we got used to it that maids are lower than us. They don't eat with us. They don't deserve to eat with us. They have to eat in the kitchen. They have to eat the leftover. Why? The Prophet Muhammad wasallam told us about our servants, our maids, those who are in, under our authority, he said what he used, a beautiful word, they are your brothers and sisters. Ikhwanukum, they are your brothers and sisters. Feed them from what you eat. Dress them, give them clothes from what you wear. And if you give them any work beyond their capacity, beyond their ability, then help them. So if you wanted to practice humbleness today, go and sit with those who are less fortunate than you. Sit with them, have a nice meal with them, buy them a gift. That will teach you, inshallah, to break the ego in, in your heart. So the definition is to accept the truth from anyone who conveys it, and to never look down upon those who are lower than you. Now the third quality, so we talked first about truthfulness, we need to insert that in our daily habits and humility. The third one is we need to replace hatred with love. We need to replace hating one another with loving one another for, for Allah's sake, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to start with this beautiful, you know, in, in this uh, segment, the beautiful hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu arda. He said that the messenger of Allah said, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَيْنَ الْمُتَحَابُونَ بِجَلَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, He will shout, he will, he will call by saying, Where are those who love each other for my glory? Where are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be looking for people who genuinely loved one another for the sake of Allah during the lifetime. And then He will say what? اليوم, this day, the most difficult day, the day of judgment, where the sun will be coming closer to our head by one mile. That is the day where we'll be running to the prophets asking for their help. In the most difficult day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say what? Where are those who love each other for my glory? This day I shall shelter them, I shall shade them in my shade, where there will be no shade except my shade. That is the reward of loving one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Excuse me. So my brothers and sisters, in, in one of the very popular narration as well, 
the Prophet ﷺ gave us the seven qualities or the seven categories of people who would be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And one of these categories are two people who love each other for the sake of Allah. They meet upon that and they depart upon that. Would you want to be among them? Would you? Okay, so I want you to stand up. Let us go practical now. Stand up. I'm serious by the way. The shiyukh, yani, if, you, if it is difficult for you to stand up, it's okay. I know that we ate a lot of barbecue yesterday, so it's difficult for us to stand up. Okay, I want to, yeah, stretch a little bit, yeah, yeah I know. You, do you guys want coffee? Coffee? Co- <sighs> Alright, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa listen to this. He taught us to express that love. He taught us how to express loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man came to him and he told him, I love this man standing over there. The Prophet ﷺ told him, have you told him? Did you tell him that you love him? He said, no. The Prophet ﷺ told him what? Go and tell him that. Why are you telling me? If I love Shaykh Tawfiq Chaudhry so much, will I go to say to Shaykh Wahaj and tell him, you know what Shaykh Wahaj? I love Shaykh Tawfiq so much. <laughs> Does that make any sense? No. If I love Sheikh Tawfiq, I will go and embrace him and I will tell him I love you for the sake of Allah. And he should respond to me yani with, with respect, not should. Yani. <laughs> he should res- respond to me with the same thing that the Prophet ﷺ had taught us. May the one whom you loved me for his sake love you also. What an amazing, beautiful manner that has been forgotten. So we want it to go practical today, but it's not for a show. We want it to practice it now and then inshallah regularly. Whenever you meet your parents, whenever you meet your friends, embrace them and tell them, I love you for the sake of Allah. So I want to see now the sisters, the sisters to embrace one another and do the following. Wait, wait. Now we wanted to hug, right? Wait. Listen to the, to the instruction. I want, yani find the next to you, the, the person next to you. Hug her and tell her, I love you for the sake of Allah. Wait, wait, subhanAllah. That's why we're not successful. <laughs> we do not complete the instructions. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I want you to express that love to tell your sister, I love you for the sake of Allah. And the one who heard that should respond by saying, May the one whom you loved me for his sake love you also. I want you to, I, I don't want brothers go to the sisters. I love you, sister. For the, no, no. Don't act smart. We do love our sisters for the sake of Allah, but expressing that may create fitna. So we want it just, you know, brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters. Right? And the hug starts now. Bismillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh. Oh, enough love, enough love. Sit down. Khalas, enough love. <laughs> MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that hug and that expression of love for one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it real, genuine, sincere for His sake alone. Ameen. Say Ameen, brothers and sisters. I'm tired guys, you have to help me out. <laughs> Alright, so the fourth and the last quality that I want to talk about, we wanted to replace inconsistency from our lives and replace it with consistency, istiqama, steadfastness. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, Haddithni bi amrin a'tasimu bihi. Talk to me of something that I should hold firm on it, that I uphold firmly. The Prophet ﷺ told him what? قُلْ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Say, Allah is my Lord. This is the shahada, the declaration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king, is the creator of everything that exists. Say that. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Then be upright. Then remain firm upon that saying. It's not just about saying La ilaha illallah and do nothing. In accordance with that statement, we have to be consistent after saying La ilaha illallah. After shahada comes istiqama. You know the scholars would say what? Al ibra laysat biman sabak. Al ibra biman thabat. Allahu akbar. They would say that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will determine your destiny, whether inshallah Jannah, or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from hellfire, not because you became righteous before others, no. But by the quality of being steadfast, steadfastness upon the, the straight path. That's why every day, every salah, in our prayer we say what? إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Don't we say that every day? Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us already? Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us already by making us Muslims, alhamdulillah? And what, a, what more beautiful blessings than being a Muslim? But the meaning according to some you know, interpretation, it doesn't just mean the guidance. It means, oh Allah, I'm asking you to show me the way, to take me there and to keep me firm upon it. So to take me and keep me, to take me there, to show me the way, and to keep me firm upon that straight path. That's why we keep repeating it. اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Another scholars would say, طَرِيقُ اللَّهِ طَوِيلٌ The journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is long. But it's not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not determine your destiny, whether Jannah or Hellfire, by reaching the destination, but rather by dying upon the destination. While you are on the straight path, all the time you passed away, that's it. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to Jannah. Steadfastness. I want to just end up, inshallah, by uh, a beautiful story of uh, a companion. And by the way, even the Prophet ﷺ, imagine this with me. Even the Prophet ﷺ was commanded by Allah to remain steadfast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ Remain firm upon the path as you have been commanded. Who is receiving this commandment? The Prophet of Allah, the best of all selections, the best of all prophets. How about you and me? May Allah save us. May Allah save us, my brothers and sisters. When this verse was revealed, when this chapter was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ said what? Shayyabatni hud. The chapter of hud has made my hair go gray because of the heaviness of the message. Because it's one of the challenging manners that we need to keep. One of the most difficult manners is to remain firm, consistent. It's difficult, but it's possible. It's possible to happen. Now, one of the stories that we'll end up with, inshallah, is the story of a man by the name of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi. What's his name? I want you to memorize that name. Because if I ask you who's the, 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 the actor of this movie or the player of this game, we memorize them by heart. We know whom they married to, where they born, what, when they were born. We know everything about them. But when you talk about our heroes, our companions, may Allah be pleased with them and bring, bring us with them in Jannah, we fail, unfortunately. So what's the companion's name? Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi. There is a purpose behind me asking you to memorize that name because there is a homework, inshallah, for you before I leave Perth. There will be a homework, all right? Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi was one of the companions who fought in a certain battle during the, the region of Umar al-Khattab. And he and a large number of the companions were caught by a Christian king and they were jailed. And then they brought Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi to the Christian's court the Christian king's court, and he told him, embrace Christianity, and I will give you half of my wealth. Just embrace Christianity. So Abdullah ibn Hudhafa, look how strong, firm, and steadfast he was. He told him, Wallahi, by Allah, if you, give, if you give me all of your wealth, and the wealth of the entire creation, I will never leave the religion of Muhammad for a blinking of an eye. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa this is how he produced leaders. This is how he produced people who are firm with very, very clear vision. Jannah is there. I can see it. I can smell it. How could I give up that for money? And look, Abdullah ibn Hudhafa Sahmi could have, may Allah please with him, he could have easily said, no, thank you for your offer. I'm not interested. He could have said that. But look how firm, look how the choices of word he had. By Allah, I will never leave the religion of Muhammad وسلم, by a blinking of an eye. He told him, okay, I'm going to give you my daughter in marriage. He said, who told you that I wanted to marry? <laughs> this is one of the stubborn companions, may Allah please with him. They jailed him in a cell and they sent after him a prostitute to seduce him inside his cell. And he ran from her within his cell. Radiallahu anhu arda. To an extent that the lady felt bored and she left the cell. She said, he's a rock. 
He's a rock. He's not moving. They prevented him from eating and drinking for three days until his neck, radiallahu anhu arda, was twisted from weakness. Then they provide him with pork and wine. He didn't touch them. And they ask him, aren't you hungry? You're going to die. Eat something. He say, but Allah, in my condition, pork and wine becomes halal because that's the only option I have. But I don't want the Christian king to say that a companion from the Prophet ﷺ have tasted the haram. They hung him on a tree and the king told him, just shoot arrows toward his directions, but don't hit him. Just to scare him off. And he was firm. Imagine with me, he's on the tree, handcuffed, and the arrows coming left and right, and he was firm. He was firm. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. They brought him and few of his companions, and they told him, "Embrace Christianity now, otherwise we will throw you in a boiling oil." Imagine this. And the king ordered two of his companions to be thrown in a boiling oil. And Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al sahmi was saying that when they dipped them in, I saw their bones are floating on the surface of the oil. So he cried, radiallahu anhu arda. So they thought that they had broken him. They informed the king that Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al sahmi is crying now. He said, okay, bring him to me. Bring him now to me. Are you ready now to embrace Christianity? He said, no. By Allah, I will never leave the deen of Muhammad for a blinking of an eye. So why did you cry? If that's the case, why did you cry? He said, when I looked at my companions being killed, being thrown in a boiling oil, I remembered I have got only one soul. If you dip me, if you killed me, that's it. Once and that's all. So I wished to have a hundred souls. And you would kill me a hundred times and in every time I will die for the sake of Allah. That's how firm, steadfast he was. So the king lost hope. So he told him, okay, all right. Kiss my head. You see, kiss my head and I will let you go free. He said, no. He said, even I will not allow you to kiss my head. <laughs> Radiallahu anhu arda. What's his name? Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi. Radiallahu anhu arda. He said, okay, kiss my head and I will let you go free. And I will free 60 of, you know, the Muslim prisoners. He said, no. Okay, kiss my head. And I'll let you go free, and with you 120 prisoners. He said, no. Okay, kiss my head, please. <laughs> and I'll let you go free, and with you 300 of the companions. He said, okay. He agreed. He was doing this to free his friends. And he went up to the king, and he kissed his forehead. And he was freed with 300 companions, and even the king gave them some concubines as gifts. <laughs> and on the way, some people... Some people started talking about this incident that Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi radiallahu anhu arda had kissed the Christian king. They were a bit, you know, sad that Abdullah had done such an act. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda heard it. It came to his attention that some people are talking about Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi. So he came in public and he said, Wallahi, it is a duty upon every Muslim to kiss the forehead of Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi and I will do it first. And he kissed the head, the forehead of Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi. Now, did you guess the homework? Anyone can guess the homework. What is the homework? When we get to Jannah, inshallah. Say inshallah. Be hopeful. In Al-Firdaus al-A'la, inshallah. When we get there, we're going to look for Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi, radiallahu anhu arda, and kiss his forehead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to meet the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wonderful companions in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. It is sad that I'm leaving Perth. Wallahi, Wallahi, I enjoyed my stay, although it is very short, but it's very sad. So I'm so, so looking forward to reunite with you once again. I want you to pray for my safety and my children. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>